I'm trying to combine colors, touch, beauty, this and that in one. And it comes naturally, I cannot explain it. I paint when I want to paint. I don't have to ask anybody or anything around me should happen so I can do what I am doing. It came to me easy, not because I practiced, but that was something I liked to do. I did it well. When you like something, you do it. Very simple. I see an artist who has a gift. The paintings are so expressive and they are in motion. The works themselves have a sense of light, of color, of movement. Well, there are artists who wait for inspiration and there are others who do, and she does. What is so remarkable about her is you couldn't take one style and say, well, that's what she's the best at. Her journey is engagement. The colors and the lines, everything will start coming to her. They captured the world in a very still image of what it's like to have motion. If we speak the same language, I'll be happy. It's the language of the feeling. It's something I cannot put a name on it. It comes, it's here. That's it. That's the language. Where are the puppies? Lexi, dancer, come, come. So what are we going to do today? <laughs> we'll probably uh, take inventory of some paintings and develop some ideas on what to paint next. No close up for me. Yeah, <laughs> please, no, no close up, Mr. DeMille. <laughs> That's the opposite today. <laughs> My family, I had my father who was an artist. He painted very few, like three, only three paintings. He was the first and the only one in the family painting. He actually escaped the Armenian genocide. He wound up in Syria where he met my grandmother. And from there, they both moved to Egypt and that's where they had my mother and her two siblings. He was just a very powerful man as far as his mind goes. He was an inventor, and I never really got to meet him. But just from her description of him, I believe that a lot of her personality comes from him. Her mother, who I did get to meet, she was very supportive of my mother growing up. She made everything happen even without money. My grandmother would save up money just so um, my mom could take piano lessons, for instance. They give you one push in the beginning. That's the push. That's a big help when somebody believes in you. No matter what you're doing, if somebody believes in you, that's the big push. Then you do it your way. When my mother expressed an interest in art, my grandmother saved up enough money to send her to art school. And when you go to French school, they are very expensive, and they force you to wear a uniform. I didn't have it at that time, but uh, 
In, um, in, um, in France, when you don't do well, you go and work in the field. They pick cotton here in America. Huh? Over there, they plant shoe, uh, cauliflower or uh, the other type. So when I didn't succeed 100% in the math, it was a math. And this guy was coming from France in Egypt and teaching the girls. One day he asked me, what is your book, math book? I showed him my math book and they were not open. I never opened this book. So he got mad at me. He said, ta, 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 ta. you better go and plant shukrut. You're useless. Uh, go, go, Ali planted the shoe, my friends. Instead of planting cotton or anything, the shoe, like he recommended and insulted me, I planted all kinds of paintings. Quantity, big quantity. Poor thing, he's still doing math, counting. One, two, three. That's what I ex try to explain. I am something, he is another. That doesn't mean he's bad, but he's different. You are different, and you are different. And vive la différence. When I started painting, they give you a picture in color, and you copy it. I did this, number one, first one. I tried to do something like the Italian magazine who had on the cover this type of work, that's illustration. And I made this as the first time I was doing this thing, this illustration. Then I finished this and this and this, all those. Then I finished all the books, all the covers. Those are illustration type. This was for the cover for a book. I did this in school. That was the model for the class. This is not a photo. This is done with the pen. It's a poet, L Lebanese poets. This one here. Yeah. He gave me the picture, the photo. So I showed him this. He kissed me here on the head. That, that was the best thing. I mean, a million dollars coming from him, that was, he was a good, good one. That's part of it, but. Her training, interestingly enough, uh, during the war, uh, a number of Italian artists went to Egypt to protect themselves. There's actually an institute where she went to Leonardo da Vinci School, and they were protecting their artists but they're also, these artists were giving back and they gave to Rita. So she has the training, but beyond the training, she has the natural gift. And I could see that. I mean, there's no question. She looks at something, she could draw it. I left Egypt in uh, 1960, but uh, I went to Europe and other places for a short time, but I left completely 1960, I went to Beirut, Lebanon. She started doing illustration covers of magazines and book covers and things like that. In Lebanon, um, I had a lot of people helping me, appreciating the art and helping me. That's why I continue doing what I am doing more and more. And from there, after five years, I came to the United States. And she started working at Universal Studios as a portrait artist, and she even got offered her own gallery there at one point. I loved it, yes. It was painting. It was a challenge, resemblance, 15 minutes, practice. 
There were so many other things to do as an artist in the United States. You don't stick to one thing. I would say the greatest accomplishments in Rita's life would be how she knew what she wanted and how she kept going till she got there. Soon after she came here, uh, she met my father, and I think that was the big trigger point where she didn't really have to worry about working, and she could concentrate more on her art. Being given that opportunity, she developed her true style, and she was able to just keep going and experimenting with different things, and I think that's what brought her to who she is today. For a long time, when I was uh, moving from one continent to the other, I didn't have a relationship or this or that. Um, family wants you to get married. Your mother wants you to get married. Everybody, I don't know why. I didn't have um, big hope for this. I, I, that was not what I wanted. It was a nightmare. Anything you touch should be successful. Each individual has a degree of success. If you get to the top, that means you pursued it to the top by doing it over and over and better and better. You don't give up. There's a lot of celebrities in Beverly Hills and uh, they used to come to the gallery and uh, there was a very nice big store on Beverly Hills and uh, the manager uh, hired me to make, uh, to give paintings, my work to the store. Ella Fitzgerald and Donna Reed bought my painting from Sloan and I still have the pictures of it. And one day I had like four, five, six paintings in the store and she called me, she said, uh, we've been robbed. They stole the paintings. And I always, when I give a painting, I make a picture. I still have the picture with me here. They are lost somewhere. They told me it's an uh, inside job. We knew somebody and he brought to me the picture of the daughter of Nixon and I painted her and he took the painting and he delivered the painting to Nixon. When my parents opened their gallery in, uh, I think it was 71 or 72 in Beverly Hills, it had barely been open a year or two, and then my mother became pregnant with me, and they decided to close the gallery at that time so that she can spend time with me and give me the attention that I needed. And growing up, I was the inspiration for many of her uh, ballet pieces. Soon after that, we had moved to uh, Malibu in the early 80s, and there is just such beautiful scenery. She did a lot of landscapes there. She did a lot of seascapes, of course. A large segment of her work uh, was painted in Malibu because we lived there for almost 30 years. Welcome, I'm Beverly Taki with KBU, your Malibu News Network, and today we're on location at the Ballet Studio by the Sea. H how did you come up with this idea to, to look at these beautiful ballerinas and draw them, paint them? 
I came to the back room and uh, I saw them dressing, undressing, getting prepared for the show and uh, I took some picture and that's how I got to, make, to have this show. But you took this approach of really capturing their facial expressions off stage, their stress, their anxiety, and I see in a lot of their faces how they're anxiously awaiting to appear um, before the audience. Yeah, I wanted to do something different, and I wanted to do something more uh, intimate and uh, be with them while they are preparing for the show. And uh, they are not aware that uh, I am there taking their pictures, or and they do something very natural, not posing or something artificial. My ballerinas are stressed. It's normal. It's, it's natural. It's part of the beauty of the dance, stress. Rita, tell me what's next for you after the ballerinas. Are you going to continue painting ballerinas, or is there going to be a new subject? No, this is only one part. My daughter, Amber, is my main uh, model. And I do other subjects, too, other than ballerinas. When you get to know her, she loves color. She loves the feminine mystique. She loves sensuosity. I always painted uh, nude women. I enjoy doing that till now. That's the best subject for me. I, I did the um, landscape, floral, all kinds of subjects, but this is, this is fun, it's beautiful. What I'm doing is a beautiful subject. The touch is different. In each and every painter, there is a different touch. It's how you do it and why you do it, how you do it, while you're doing this. It could be a mountain, it could be a human being, it could be an animal. And they are all beautiful. There was a time where uh, my mother was painting like crazy. She was very prolific. And she was featured in shows all over, in galleries and special events, and she had works that were commissioned. And then all of a sudden, that was no longer important to her. After a while, I didn't need any gallery or anybody to buy. I just stopped uh, worrying about anything except painting. back in um, 1965, they decided to get married in Las Vegas in 2010 when they moved here and then were re-exposed to the whole Las Vegas lifestyle. That was kind of like a full circle, just coming back to where it all began. So my mom was re-inspired by Vegas when she saw those showgirls on stage and she saw those colors and feathers and those shiny jewels that she just wanted to put that in her artwork so that's when she started painting the showgirls and then the really interesting part is how do you capture that sparkle is she took those CDs and put them on the artwork so that they became the light that really brings the showgirl energy to life it wasn't until my parents moved to Vegas she was recently discovered by the academic world at UNLV. I saw a strength of composition. Obviously, she loves color. And, you know, you, you don't normally find um, typically an artist who is as comfortable in color as with line. Rita is comfortable with both, and I saw that right away. And that was very intriguing. And so I saw the whole collection that they still have at the house. And there's a very diverse body of work she does mostly female figures, a lot of children, other themes that she'll work on, but mostly feminine uh, compositions. And as I went through the, the large body work that they have, which is over a thousand paintings, I saw that she did some dance. And I've done three or four collaborations here at UNLV with the dance department. It's part of what I like to think of as applied research. And so everything just sort of fell into place uh, pieces coming from different directions just perfectly fell into place and by mid-January after two weeks 
it was going forward. Robert Tracy came to me and told me that he had discovered this artist and he was curating a show and that the show was ballet and showgirls. And first of all, I said, well, that's a fantastic combination because um, we live in Las Vegas, so we have the showgirl, but that ballet actually started with spectacle, so it was a perfect kind of marriage of the images. I was a ballet dancer and then I was a showgirl. So when I look at her paintings and sculptures of ballet dancers, it's just overwhelming to see that she could capture that delicate feature of a ballet dancer and then move right into the exotic, sensuous beauty of a showgirl. As far as Rita goes, I look at her as having the same passion, inspiration, uh, vision, when I looked to the right, I look at the ballet pictures and that was a half of my life. And then I looked to the left and I saw the showgirl pictures and I was like, that was my life. And that she saw me, that's how I feel. Like she saw me, but I didn't know her. The showgirl, she's been painting those the last five, six years. The hand-eye coordination is extremely strong. I look at students in the art department, they struggle from what they see in their eyes and their soul, down the neck, shoulder, arm to the hand. A lot of times something is lost, not with Rita. It's all there. She sustains it. When the title of the show came together, we argued about, you know, Rita asked for her way, Rita asked for rediscovered. Deliberately, I like her way, because it tells us she's a strong woman. She's a strong artist. She's not doing it because of a gallerist. She's not doing it because of patrons. She's doing it because it's a passion. It's her passion. My way was the whole life I had. If he, it doesn't connect here, to another one, another thing, different way. I did it, and he did it my way. I didn't have a very busy life, so painting was the most important thing, and I kept doing something I like to do. And that's why I didn't finish till today. Nothing stopped me. I don't have to look for the energy or the idea or this or that. They are here. They are with me. They come out, not in. I said all I had to say. If you don't understand it, too bad. But other than that, I'll keep doing better things, different things, and new things for me. Even for me, they'll be new. I am not tired, no. I have new ideas. I'm going to do something new.